Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNL, The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But right now, we need to read about the unfortunate event in which Vologda declines. Even though some had voiced their concerns on the military government of Vologda and their possible reluctance to join us, we decided to take the chance to make an open offer, since we had nothing to lose. But it seems that in the end, they were right, as they wished to maintain their neutrality, Vologda has explicitly refused to surrender to a communist regime. As such, conflict is their only option. We must show no mercy in destroying the anti-communist junta to our west, lacking the ability to field a large, powerful, and well-supplied army. They'll not be able to resist effectively. And aside from the insignificant resistance that might linger on, led by those who are not loyal, they'll be dealt with as a threat within a very short amount of time. At least, that's what the high command claims. Thus, we can no longer delay the invasion of Alagda. To arms, comrades. And of course, we're still seizing the wealth. If you'd like to read that one again, please go right ahead. And I've already read this one too, build a line, but it is what it is, as we are preparing for basically just war. Just, oh, we're out of manpower. Oh, that is not good. Not, not good. But we can raid against Vyatka if we really wanted to. Neutrality is getting rid of yourself. No mercy for splitters. Well, I mean, if we do go to war with them... Ooh, I've been since it goes up. 2nd October. Well, Vyatka did take these guys out as well, so before we do anything else... They have a ton of divisions. Holy crap. Question of religious freedom. Um, so they're down here. Southern governance. Patchwork. Oh, so we'll go to war with them immediately, basically. Ooh, Tartarstan? Um, hmm. Is Tartarstan dead? Well, it looks like it. Well then. That's not good. And if that happens, ah, uh, oh crap, the Fractured Republic's Friends Insective Car? Um, March of the Old Capital. <sighs> yeah, we might do some, uh, funky stuff here. Just because this is not going to be good. And then negotiate reclaim. Um, they get them? We, we don't? Oh, come on, guys. Bro, come on. So let's not go to war with them yet. We'll build the line, and we'll ready the south as well. In order to launch a successful campaign against Vyaka, we need to ensure that we're ready for the war. To this end, we must begin a mobilization effort focused on the south of Komi, so that we have enough troops to actually fight the Tsars. We'll ensure that our troops are able to get into position for this war. Furthermore, we'll send our army engineers to the Vyaka River in order to find the best location to cross it. Our drills have determined that crossing and securing the Vyaka River will be the critical priority early in the war, so to improvise the river crossing will be daily to our war effort. We must be ready to strike down the Tsars. I'm going to do a couple more just because this is going to be kind of crappy, and I'm going to do a lot of soft screen, so... Attrition preparation. The Vyakin army is one of the most powerful in Western Russia. And a war against them risks the possibility of devolving into a long and bloody struggle. If this is to happen, we do not want our troops to starve, as that is how one loses a war. To prevent this outcome from occurring, we must begin to stockpile supplies. Armies will be expanded and food will be preserved to the best of our ability so that our army can survive a protracted war. We'll also make sure that our soldiers have access to adequate clothing depending on the climate, even if the war with the Vyakin lasts for a long time. Our efforts will ensure that we come on top, and neutrality is skewis sky. Why should we enter negotiations with traitors? These Vologda dudes sold out Russia for the sake of their so-called neutrality, even if they agreed to peaceful integration. Who is to say that they won't betray us at the worst possible moment? Besides, neutrality has only made them servants of the fascist cause, and therefore not the type of people we want involved with the government in any capacity. We must prepare our troops to conquer Vologda and liberate the peoples from these fascist servants, and no mercy for splitters. Vologda is nothing but a splitter state, and must be conquered. Our troops are in place, and our supplies are ready for us to march against Vologda. We'll conquer the so-called neutral state and liberate its people from the chains they are bound in. The time for war against Vologda is now, and a couple comments before we fade in, fade out. Um, so it says there's a sub-mod that guarantees all successful or special projects to be as successful as possible. Uh, I already, yeah, I know about that one, and we'll use it very soon. Um, so yeah, I do know about the sub-mod, we will use it in this campaign. So it says the proper way to play Zidane early on is to keep eyes straight ahead, and has because it has a more interesting development or relationship between Nikolai, I think, Vosnesensky and Zidanev. Uh, plays Modernist, as well as Bastilar Tomsk, eventually. Play TNO, the submod TNO, uh, submod TNO Operation Deep Freeze. I do want to, even though this focus tree doesn't really have one, which is kind of disappointing, but I'll probably get to that eventually. And play as Kaiser Reich, or Kaiser Redux, Middle Africa. Well, everyone, um, we're still at war, and Vologda was absorbed by the West Russian Revolutionary Front. We're struggling against Vyaka right now, who is also fighting Samara, and honestly, I hate this so much. But that's alright. Whatever. I tell that before. But uh, I do want to go over a couple more focuses that uh, I've had to do. So this one auto-completed. So if you want to about No Mercy for Splitters, please go right ahead. I did do 2nd October to go to war with them because Samar declared war on Vyaka. All of our efforts in preparing have succeeded. And the time to begin the war against the Tsars has arrived. It will not allow monarchism to once again take root in Russia. Our troops will cross the Vyaka River and begin the war against Vyaka. Just as our comrades did in 1917, we'll strike down the Tsar from his throne and consolidate our territory. Our rapid gains in new lands, whether through peace or war, have left the administration overextended. While we've left 
If we have theoretical control over a very large chunk of Western Russia, the fact is that there are so many pockets within our territory that operate freely, possibly even against Comey. We must rectify the situation now. Before we march against the rest of the warlords, more funding and manpower will be devoted to not only keeping the peace everywhere in our lands, but also to our new regional administrations. With the increase of workers and money, the new administration should be able to begin the process of truly consolidating the new lands, bringing them thoroughly under our control. Replenish the armory. Our recent wars have left our weapon supplies dangerously low, and it's good that we must need to we must restock or risk supply shortages. We must audit all the captured equipment and see what can be of us, use to us. Furthermore, we need to start up new weapons factories and restart the old ones, so that we do not run out of ammo or rifles at a critical juncture. While this requires us to move our military to a defensive position for now, it's necessary so we can succeed in conquering the warlords, which, my god, do we need. <clears throat> and sure, industrial effectiveness. In a conquest, we managed to seize the control of a large amount of factories, all in varying states of readiness. While I've been able to get some of them up and running again, there's still many that need to be properly restored and restarted. We must focus our efforts on ensuring that these factories must not cannot only function, but function productively. <clears throat> we'll also ensure that these new factories have workers who understand the power of communism as to prevent any saboteurs wrecking havoc. Satisfy the peasantry. The majority of people in Russia are peasants. While there are many who still support us, there are also many who have been corrupted by reactionary propaganda. We must show the peasants that we are a benevolent force, and not a specter that seeks to ruin their lives. We'll accomplish this task by providing the uh, peasants with the modern equipment that we can, so that their lives become easier. Furthermore, we will ensure that the peasants have access to modern amenities and th methods of communication, improving their standards of living, hopefully. These efforts will show the rural peoples of Russia that we only seek to better their lives, not cast them into heck, and relocate the party. With recent conquests, multiple people in the party have advocated for a relocation of the capital from Siktiv Karakov, while Rakov is a more central location, which would allow us to govern easier. The fact of the matter remains that relocation of the party is a costly endeavor. We would have to stage such a relocation so the government couldn't be wiped out in a single blow and the capital would be closer to our enemies. However, there are many who argue that despite the cost, the benefits of moving to Rakov would be immense in the long term. We must resolve this debate now before we must direct resources into more wars against warlords and fulfilling our promises. Oh, well... We're not at peace, but we struck a deal with the front. An agreement was made to begin the process of integration once Vyaka, Volokta, and Gaini were handled. Now, with the military defeated, uh, the time has come to begin integration. We wholeheartedly expect the for the front to fall through on their end, although there are a few who believe that they will sell us out. In any case, let's reach out to the WRF to begin the process of integration, which actually I did get the event here earlier um, for uh, whether we want to begin talks. And I did do say we should begin talks, so, but whatever, the backup plan. <clears throat> But we can do Orthodox Front, but I don't want to get sus off this time. Let's go popular or party against the Puppet Master. Well, there are many in the party, <clears throat> excuse me, who romanticized the early years of the Soviet Union before the Germans evaded. It must be acknowledged that Orthodoxy failed us in the past. Bukharin did not fail because he didn't follow Marxist Leninist principles well enough. It failed, he failed, because he followed them too strictly. If Suslov is to become the next General Secretary of the Communist Party in Komi, then that will be our doom. He will lead us down the same path of failure we already tried. No, we must instead forge a new path, our own path. The more adaptive members of the party must start consolidating their own bloc to oppose Sosov's influence. More political power, which would be very nice. Of course, which would be very, very good. The connections of Zidanev. Andrei Zidanev is exactly the kind of man we need in charge of the Communist Party today. Not only has he proven himself capable of bridging the gap between the Soslovites and Bukharinets among us, but his ideas have the potential to transform a new Soviet Union into something never before seen. Additionally, this wide array or wide net of political connections and allies gives him an already strong political base. If everyone has the ability... If anyone has the ability to bring Russia and the Communist Party in the modern era, it would be Zidanev, the foundations of society. As part of the party's ideological education program, so treatises, or treaties, or treatises, and work of the communist literature have been added to the official requiring reading list of the state, now including several of Zidanev's own works. His works and manifestos are to be featured heavily in the modern political works section, and describe his vision of the communism, bringing the Soviet Union into the future technologically and culturally. These works will serve not only to expand our catalog of reading material, but also to increase Zidanev's public explosion popularity base. Zidanev has taken special interest in writing of books and socialism lately, and has gone so far as to oversee the industry of it, of it himself. In Komi, there is now being books written and printed about the very foundations of the proletarian society, about the organization of labor, about the evils of capitalism, and about the history of socialism itself. Zidanev is known to be the foremost communist in the nation, a man who can truly be said to know socialism like the back of his hand. It says a great deal about the quality of the work being produced as Zidanev is greatly pleased with them. Distribution has already begun, first to the schools and libraries, and to the labor unions after, and finally to the general public in turn. Take a look, it's in a book, a manifesto, and the voices of the people. Zidanev is a true liberal among us. In recent weeks, he has been wrapping up his calls for openness and transparency in government, calling the current system not only opaque, but corrupting in nature. Additionally, his call for the further liberalization of speech, arguing heavily in favor of new legislation protecting free speech, and even made some radical calls for inv involving the people more heavily in government. These calls for citizen participation and transparency in the government have done much to increase Zidanev's influence and popularity. <coughs> as now, like as I read earlier, we'll be fulfilling our promises. If you read this again, please go right ahead. 
And we have actually one now. Vyako, like after after the fade and fade out earlier, Vyako quickly uh, collapsed because Samara was doing really well as well. And then Samara could warn us. So I'm like, okay, that's fine with us. That's totally fine with us. Um, workers, let's go with workers. So one of us in the party uh, is strong. It's very strong. Oh, uh, uh, well, hmm. Hmm. 74. I forget how much that gives us, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but then we'll have to do a backup plan. It seems that our worst nightmare is coming to pass, as the WRF has de declined our offers for integration. As obvious that the front seeks to conquer Komi, gaining power in the process, as there's no other reason for them to suddenly decide to turn against us, their allies. Thankfully, we have a backup plan. War with the front. We must quickly begin to move our troops into position so that we are ready to destroy the traitors to the north, of course. We must also attempt to keep these actions as secret as possible, so that they cannot properly respond to our military. The armies of the front may be experienced, but with any luck, we can destroy this upstart military junta before it destroys us. Which would be a good thing to do. 75 jumps up to... Uh, 76. Oh, that's not very much. Res lacks restrictions. Well, 86 jumps down to what? And also, uh, we have uh, probably is getting worse, even though we're trying to improve everything else here. So honestly, this is not looking too bad at all. Uh, Admin efficiency is getting better, of course, as well. X priest is looking quite good. Holy crap! Uh, and Paraguay has fallen from the Triple Alliance. So another revolution quashed. Wow. Brazilian occupation zone. Argentine occupation zone. Oh, there goes Dietzlin. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, and then we have, uh... Wow. That really sucks. Harona's here, huh? Uruguay... Uruguayan occupation zone. Wow. Bruh. Sucks to be Paraguayan, I guess. So, 86. Okay, that's actually better to do. Relax restrictions. Yeah, that'd be good. What if it's a tie? That's a good question. Actually, what happens when it does become a tie? Happy 65, though, everybody. Happy 65. Uh, we have surplus now, which is nice. Filling a promises, of course. Back up plan. Democracy returns early. I'll write them. Yeah. A little bit of growth. The WRF refuses. Excerpt from On Deviationism. A response to the West Russian pseudo revolutionaries. Special publication of the Komi ASSR. It is with a deep disappointment. By no real surprise that we discovered the true nature of the so called Arkhangelsk socialists, or as we now know them, the Arkhangelsk junta. We had all of us nursed doubts as to the ideological consistency of men who. Whose guns seem so often to outweigh their convictions? Why did the revolutionary frontists choose to get their senior generals with unclear connections to the Politburo? Five times that were autonomous from the remaining territory. How could the revolutionary front's civilian policy not consider the role of autonomous communist party organs in developing ideological devotion to the local proletariats? We now know that the clique, who those red painted jackals in waiting, were not conflicted in over the bizarre attempts at imposing socialism at gunpoint, in all truthfulness. This author doubts that the Revolutionary Front was ever truly committed to socialism at all, other than as a way to further the cause of the bourgeois crypto nationalism. All illusions must be henceforth be dispelled, all hopes released, all expectations destroyed. The truth is that Archangel's far from being our salvation has turned out to be yet another righteous, deviationist gang of our men devoted only to perverting the revolution in the twisted and violent image. If there's anything to be learned from the state of affairs, it is a renewed understanding that only a commitment to the party line can ensure true loyalty to the revolution. Just think, had it not been for the party of the republic, we would have been as prone as any other people in Russia to, to the disease that is warlordism. We thank our congress for this, and only this, because of their stubbornness. We have been inoculated from this disease once and for all. We didn't need them anyways, and cut the radio lines. Since it, we were the closest nation to the WRF, they relied upon our radio lines and networks for communication for the outside world. Let us cut these lines, depriving them, and depriving them of the, such network. <clears throat> Such an action undoubtedly confuses them as a sudden vanishing of contact tends to do, leaving them scrambling at a critical juncture. Furthermore, it seems that some of their border forces relied on our networks to reach our Congos, so their destruction of these contacts will allow us to assault the border, leaving the soldiers unable to get in contact with the superior officers, which prevents our troops from meeting opposition until we have advanced further into the country. Nice. And the impact? Good. Good, good, good. Ah, oh, good, nice. And... Well, I'll get that one too. I don't want to spend all this political power, but we still get over one a day, which is actually really nice. We have enough money too. Uh, we could do this stuff as well, but I, I don't want to do any of this stuff really. Yeah. Back plan. Good job, Germany. And we'll be at war very soon. Wow. Holy crap, we need core everybody. You get half a million map. I know where we struggle so much earlier. I hate Western Russia sometimes, but a WRF, despite their noble fight against the Germans, have proven to be nothing more than revisionists. If they're to be allowed to succeed, Russia will become nothing more than a military junta, backed by the image of communism. We must declare war and put an end to this farce of communism before they put an end to us, four soldiers. Also, we did lose it, the, like normal, at least for me, um, the IFE division just because forcing the attack and they sometimes die. So, it is what it is. Oh, oh, look at this. Credit rating improved. Look at that. We are no longer media. We're no longer poor. We're just mediocre. So better debt ceiling. Interest rate did go down. Effective interest rates actually went down as well. Stability. Uh, let's see. What did it happen? Dash. Oh, that's cool. 
Um, stability went up a little bit, and effects of debt on GDP growth. So we should get a little bit more growth from that. So not bad. Very nice. Very awesome. We still get a surplus of a, over a billion dollars every year. Not bad. Thank you very much. Now let's do business. Take down the despots. Yes. Anything else over here? So now we're at 76 and... Is it done about it? Yes. Let's get really because we can. And keep working on stuff like this. Ooh, what do we want? We want to see production units. Let's go with production units. I like production units. And then incorporating them. Well, it would be a piece for this one. So, next one will be the evaluation of party policy. A key moment is the ride of the party's history. The party's yearly evaluations arrive. Historically, the party's evaluation has either been a bellwether of change or an early sign of continuing reign of orthodoxy. With Bukharina on the rise and the reformists setting the party's hierarchy, it may seem to be a certain victory for it, reformists, but orthodox Marxist evaluators still dominate much of the party's organs. Certainly, many of the Bukharina. Bukharina's methods have proved effective, but the old guard watches carefully for signs of instability or progress gone too far. The question remains, shall orthodoxy take hold once again, or will the reformists take ascendancy? Eh, we'll see what happens. Especially with a good amount of equipment. And we do have a few planes here too. This is not bad. Not bad at all. And what are we making tanks? Take down them god dang despots. Oh wow, they threw in a lot more divisions than I thought they would have had. Sorry though. I'll go there, and there, and then up through there. See what you all can do. They have a lot of divisions, which is... Oh, crap. That's not good. Go in here. Yeah, this is going to be a very destructive war. The Junta. God-awful Junta. Well, we might have lost our division already. I want you to go all the way around here. Just go and take a lot of the territory. If possible. But passing the bar... Crackdown on revisionism. Well, we're probably going to go with this one. In the early history of the Komi Communist Party, reformists were sidelined at every opportunity. Anyone seeing real change within the party and the larger community were not welcome to speak their thoughts. Fortunately, the party's changed. The reformists, after years of campaigning and protesting and maneuvering, have passed the bar. The party as a whole now approves of our actions. Even if our ideology is not yet the official ideology of the party or even the one back with the most popular support, the orthodox faction are now the ones being sidelined for the first time in years. This development is a monumental point for the development of socialism in Komi. The road is long, but the path is clear. Now reformists must march on. That is not to say that there will be no opposition. The remnants of the orthodox faction will still remain as a potent threat to changes in the system, and they are enraged that their once dominant ideology is no longer ascendant. But it is opposition that we are sure that we can defeat. Hey, more political power. Less communism? One party state with controlled opposition? Ooh. And decrease the political party effect. Yeah, we're going to lose a couple divisions here, but it is what it is, you know. Mm. Do the best we can. Um, kind of hold it off for now. So how many, do we lose 6,000 versus 15,000? Eh, it could be worse. If anything, I want you to go here. This war is going to suck hard. But if we can force our way through the north, that'll be really good. And if anything, I'm going to deploy these divisions immediately. Yeah, if we can. If we can. Nice. 15 divisions will be great. Come out through the south and kill them off that way. That would be nice. No, no, no. You want to go here, guys. Go there. You guys hold. Don't attack yet. Don't be dumb. Men are sometimes scarce. Good. Oh, the capture the capital. Also, we did make right up our capital, so. Maybe we didn't know that. There you go. Evaluation party policy. That's in the bar. Yeah, this helps us out quite a bit. The way of the people versus the way of the Soviets. If you don't know about these, please go right ahead. As well as expel the revisionists, our level central committee, and refine it last, but the way of the people. On threads of Dana, well, once a firm second in command in the Communist Party's structure has risen to prominence as reformists have taken the reins of the party. As personal ideology, rooted in a libertarian interpretation of communism, has caught fire among local Soviets across Komi, and nearly every town. And Martin marched through the town, yelling Zidana's name and touting his loyalty to the tenets of socialism. Zidana and his thoughts will lead us into the future. His popularity is unmatched, his pompous rhetoric easy to grasp and egalitarian. This is the man who cares for the liberty of the worker and for the basic liberty of any man or woman. This is the man who will lead the Republican of the future as a popular candidate of the Communist Party. As it should be, and how dare you kill ourselves off. Ah, oh, the Assembly of the Communist Party of the Communist Republic is in session. May delegates who wish to set the agenda of today's Congress please rise. And the clockwork of the big three are rising. Already the speaker can tell what the topic will be. But the Columbia Republic's leftists have only really discussed one topic in a hundred variations since the split with the Union. Who will take the reins of power now that the left is in control? What can the Columbia Republic do, surrounded as it is by the fragments of the social stream and the tyranny of generals who beat the people with its shards? Is there any really, really any purpose to fighting for the revolution in a place that seems to have become numb to it? 
is only really one question, the question of who will have all their lives work torn from under them. Who next, and what then? What is, in other words, to be done? The inaugural opening speech is as good a platform to advance the agenda as any, even if the speaker has no real hope that this shouting match will turn out differently from the others. Even so, it is her formal duty to ensure the decorum of at least attempted. And now, she must make a choice. She calls on the speakers to state their points. Zidane, of patient as ever, raises the topic of developing ideological consciousness. Lukewarm, boring, but a solid opener to the day's events. Bukharina points out that ideological consciousness will not be relevant for very long unless a work is experienced at ideology's benefits, and proposes instead a discussion of workplace democracy in the Republic. General Secretary Seslov, in his usual dry manner, proposes a merge of the two topics, the conceptualization of workplace unions to the party mandate, and the subtle, controlling, and depressingly relevant. And we all know who, which way we're going to go now to. Here, you guys go there. We're going to finish up anyways. Well, we've killed off 13,000 of our own men. Well, they've killed off quite a few. We've killed off quite a few more of them. It's good to see, so. Is this a hill? That's forest. That sucks. Um, you guys go in there, which is fine. You guys go there. If anything, you go right there. That'd make it very strong and very nice. Mm. Oh, we're about to get in circle here, too. That sucks. sucks. Not bad. Is anyone here going in here? I want both of you to stay there. Stay there. That's fine. You guys do that. That'll be fine. Passing the bar is good. Play the people. Um, if anything, if you could sit around them and circle them, that'd be great, but it might not formally abolish purges. With the Dino's leadership, the party will soften its stance on those who hold different ideological opinions of the party for a change in place for change to take place. For democratic change to take place, there must be the wealth of different men and women on an vibrant dialogue. The tradition of part mass party purges, removing hundreds of people from the party for their ideology won, no longer will those who barely lifted a finger against the party be expelled from it. In its place, anybody who suspected of counter revolutionary activity or denounced will have an individual inquiry leading to a neutral or lead by a neutral commission of party members. Without due process, just ceases to exist. Without questioning, the party ceases to exist. Very nice. Ah, oh, that sucks. You guys can hold them. That's fine. Hey, we got rid of that division. Nice. Good job, guys. As they're still trying to snake their way around here, too, so. Well, if you want to do that, fine, whatever. Um, go through here and see if you can do that. Okay, good hope. Resolution passes. All right. Oh, actually, go, just go right there. You have it. Yeah, that's nice. That's good stuff. You really want to do that? Just go like all the way around here. They go a little crazy like that. Anything else? Uh, moderately strong influence. If you want to buy, oh, better ancestral equipment, please go ahead. Excellent day. Excellent, excellent, excellent day. Beautiful, my friends. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's good. That's good. There goes those fine folks. Nice, another division destroyed, as it should be. Because now we're going to just go through a lot of these areas and take the capital, hopefully. Maybe we should just cut off the capital, that might be better, but whatever. See an emergency declared in Brazil. Hey, another encirclement, look at that. Yay. Good job, guys. This is much easier than when we started, but, you know, it is what it is. The way of the people. It's only easy because we can actually do stuff here. Red Blizzard. Miss Ivanov appraised the red splayed walls, her face carefully blank. The arsonists, or artists as they probably think of themselves, have certainly been visionary in their use of palette. Bold lines and strokes form the foundation for the uh, extravagant, a confusing mosaic of red and black here in what there appear to be the angular form of planes, rockets perhaps, arose from the scintillating mist around them, nestled in the ocean of red font like Venus of Botticelli. At the bottom of it all, uh, a slogan, the world of tomorrow with today's socialism, follow the visionary line. Oh, Mr. Handsome at the bottom, Ivan the Smith. They had to do it better they wanted to impress the headmaster of the cult cultos, school for the young artists. Dipping a sponge into her bucket of water, she began to scrub the amateurish enthusiasm away. Perhaps her next work will be more inspired, or at least less excessive in its use of outlines. The next week, the propaganda was back, bolder and more garish than ever. The arsonists, whoever they were, had evidently reacted by doubling down. Bolder and crazy, the red mist foamed in every corner. New symbols of progress, arrows reaching ever upwards, lifted atop a sea of crimson arms and hands holding, the, above, holding hammers. Above them all, a rocket bearing the spindly wheels of the atom rose like Jupiter into a shaded red sun rays. The slogan had been at least been shortened. The dawn of today. 
the stars tomorrow. Miss Ivana stared and stared, and then she began to giggle. It was so bold, it was almost endearing. She grabbed a paintbrush and began to write a note in the blue paint. And the corporal was coming back on a regular basis. Perhaps she could at least teach him a couple things about that darned outline. And so it continued, this strange courtship, and on the walls, new slogans blossomed as if heralding the coming of some unimaginable spring. A small little friendship to the warm the socialist heart. And reconcile the factions. Any scholar of political history knows of the dangers opposed by factionalism. The ability of man to tear apart the social order seems to have some grounding in nature. For it is a natural conclusion to every system in history. And yet, our hindsight will allow us to avoid a certain fate. The scientific order of the party will steer us away from factions. Reconciliation, not conflict. It's key to unity. The orthodox faction thinks us betrayed to Suslov's legacy. Our party's diplomats and envoys will assure them that our visionary faction seeks to advance Suslov's legacy, ideology, and dream. Now stomp on it. The party is just as orthodox, if not more orthodox, than it was before Zidane's ascendance. No revisionism is tolerated. Oh man. At this point, I think we kind of have them, so... That will be good. I'm gonna hold them there. Hold them. Hold them like you hold me. No kids are doing well. Oh, peace conference is over. Uh, this must be in the more eastern parts. No, or, or Africa. Nice. We still have some growth. This is awesome. Oh, they have quite a few guys here, too. Oh, wow. Actually, what happened down there? <clears throat> South Africa. Oh, wow. That, that ended early. Holy crap. They still exist, but the boar still exists too. That kind of sucks for y'all. That must be really an easy piece. Oh, wait. Okay, we won. Nice. Yay, we won. Oh, do we get this? Oh, get the little island up here too. Naryar, Naryan Mar. Um, as much as I want, I don't want to make outdated equipment still, but we got we got to keep at least one here at all times. All right. So if that's a case. Focus tree shouldn't change if we need to do that. Oh, we gotta do, yeah. Yeah, these guys. We shouldn't be too bad. We still have that elite division, which is okay. I don't want to really get rid of it yet. And these are only somewhat elite. They're not even fully elite, which does kind of suck. I do want to get some planes on these guys, though. Hmm. We'll see. And we'll work until the factions. But of course, incorporating Akangos. Despite the attempt of the front, the Germans were able to successfully bomb the far north very heavily. Many of the roads and railroads are in ruins, and the towns and cities need to be rebuilt in order to be of any use. It is therefore prudent that we will send economic aid northwards. This economic aid will be focused on our Congo's Oblast, as it has the most potential for development and was also bombed the most. We should build new factories, restore the railroads, and modernize the houses. This economic development should allow for the north to quickly become a productive part of the country, allowing for us to have a stronger economic base as we move against the rest of the warlords. Ooh, yes, more state GDP factor. Oh, that's really not good. Negative. Oh, well. We have negative growth just because we're trying to incorporate all these guys now. Um, also, before I forget, we got to do this stuff too. 85, we're good. Zidanev is there. And now we do this one. 30% of GDP totaling over $2 billion. Yes, please. We have more production units. Oh, look at that. We just paid off our, our debt. Yay. That helps with, wow, that helped out quite a bit. No debt for now. We're going to have a lot more debt later on though. The party directive A221. Andre Zidanov seldom frowned, save in the presence of some immense political contortion, which was not particularly rare in the communist party of Comey. The massive stock of paperwork on his desk, only ever shrinking by incremental amounts, was not helping his migraine. Each of the papers he was reviewing had to be individually approved by the party the general secretary and the chairman, both positions now belong to him. <clears throat> Signatures on the front and back, approving a very precise pattern of redactions upon the work, and the redaction was only the beginning. For those who were still alive and relevant to these papers had to be brought before the general secretary and vetted for approval. An approval like this one, this next one, and God, he was 30 minutes behind schedule, it would have to be quick. Zidanev waved, had a guard to bring the next person in, a ragged man stumbling onto the carpeted floor, his hands shaking. He still bore the suits typical of all app apparatchiks. Now ridden with holes and patched in parts, the bulk of torn leather he clutched had evidently been once a suitcase. He gazed in confusion for a moment, and then even knelt and bowed to the general secretary with his whole body trembling with effort. General secretary, please revise my remo removal from the party. I was... My only crime was to criticize the propaganda efforts. A heinous one, but... Andre Berezin. Berezin. By party directive A221, your sentence of expulsion is hereby negated. You are hereby restored to your position on the propaganda work team, and it is my duty to inform you that the party will no longer authorize mass expulsions from its ranks. Instead, we will individually assess accusations before... Zidane looked up to the seaman hugging a confused guardsman. Sobbing with relief, he sighed, ticked a box on the form, and put it on his finished pile. It would be a very long couple days, another mistake rectified. I'm looking at the equipment here. We definitely need more planes, so, um... I want more civvies. Let's go with two for now, and we'll max it out with 15 there. Um, oh, Onega. Uh, yeah, good luck with that, Onega. If anything, I want to kill off as many of them as possible. 
And here, ooh, expert delegator. Let's go with offensive because I like being offensive. It's so much fun being offensive, you know. All right, seven billion in GDP, not bad, no debt, just Zidane of things. Thank you, enemies defeated. Beautiful. Wondrous. Scavenge for Ludi. Booty and prepare a raid, I guess. Can we beat them up? We might not be able to. We'll see. Um, where are they at? These guys. Oh, they're not good at all. Good. Incorporating them. And, oh, uh, we're going to do this one. These guys are just going to auto bypass everything here. So, if you want to do that, please go ahead. <clears throat> Strike the Separatists. An ultimation to Gorky. Euthanize the Abomination. And the Islamists. And the West is ours. Officer of the Revolutionary Front. With the reclamation of our Congos and the end of the Revolutionary Front, we're now presented with an opportunity to exploit. Many of the officers of the Front now, high and low, are now in our custody scattered between various prison camps and detention facilities. It has been suggested by several of our senior officers that many of them would be amenable to service within our own armed forces in exchange for the pardons given as part of general amnesty. There's no denying that they have very useful talents, especially as it regards doctrines of deep battle and large-scale operations. However, their reliability, political and otherwise, has been called into question, and many within our government advise against allowing them to serve, even if they should so be pardoned. <clears throat> Others consider them outright criminals, and advise that they should be left in prison until such a time as uh, rehabilitation it can be considered, should it ever be. Regardless of choice, a decision must be made. What should be done about them? Pardon them, the schools will be useful. Pardon them, but they're out of the military, unreliable. I like this one, more political power, but we are libertarian ish, communist ish, people ish here, so we'll see what happens with that. There you go. The West is ours. Uh, reconcile the factions. There you go. Are you going to buy this? Please go ahead. Yes. But once again, of course. The stars have risen, and the West is ours. All political matters. So, let's go next. The reformist faction was once relegated to the margins of internal party politics. Its voice was silenced by orthodox suppression, a relentless attack with the party's official ideological platform. No longer. Our dissident voice is suppressed. All oppressed may cry free. The reformists are no longer the coalition of rising stars they once were. It is a ruling strand of the party. The orthodox faction are now the one sidelined. With the rapid rise of power comes far more responsibility, the faction, much to the, now much of the party, must seize a general secretaryship and begin talks to reform a general government to rule the republic. We may only hope that we keep our ideals as we finally take the reins of power. Seize all that we can use? Yes, please. Remove internal conflicts? That'll be good. Lose stability, but more research speed? Yes. Remove internal conflicts. Which one was that one? Oh, what can we do here? Ooh. I'm really loving agricultural stuff. Mm. Yeah, let's do agricultural stuff. Why not? A little bit of debt? Oh, that's not good. We still have a surplus, though, so I'm not too worried about that. Food for the hungry? There you go. Oh, we're going about better industrial expertise. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. I don't know why I keep coughing so much, but whatever. I'm not going hungry tonight. Pay debt. Now oh, we probably can't even invest this now, right? Nope, that's not right. Zarmaland. I, was, I thought, read that as farmland. So she had broken. Very nice. Anything else around here? Not really. Oh, external investments would be really nice. Trainer troops. I mean. So, 80% chance of military professionals will increase. Doing this stuff, nah, it's not really worth it right now. Research speed, research speed would be nice. Ooh, that would be at reconnect Soviet power grids. But we'll have an option to do that next time, too. Infrastructure, uh, it's not bad, but whatever. We're, we're done with that stuff for now. And now, after the stars have risen. Ooh, actually, I want to see what, what is this one? Doing conflicts. Ah, so we get a little more political power and a little more recovery rate, it's not bad. Facility the Sussovites resignation, the Bureau of Ideological Promotions. Oh, that'd be so nice. Oh. Oh man. Um Truly really marvelous, huh? Ooh. Or facilitate his resignation. I'm gonna do this one. In the past, Mikhail Sosla had a purpose. He was the glue that kept the party together. A popular figure who nevertheless stayed out of the spotlight. However, one must admit that he was staunchly orthodox. His entire career was dedicated to advancing a certain sort of socialism, a certain sort of which often came into conflict with Bukharina's brand. To put it frankly, Sosla stands in the way of true liberation. Frankly, finally, he is perhaps a little bit too adept. If he's kept in positions of power, there's little telling what he will do to correct the course of the party and expel Bukharina from it. Sosla had one fatal flaw. He no longer has power. We will send a few party envoys and encourage him to resign, of course. He's not obligated to, per se, of course. Yes, yes. What does the other one read, like? The Bureau of Ideological Analysis. Sincere is a peculiar word. One might argue, in fact, that the role of the sincere, simply, 
Uh, sign cure simply does not exist in Mark's thought. After all, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, what harm does a so-called useless job bring if each man is entitled to his needs? That is not to say that Sosolov is receiving a sin cure, as harmless as that would be. In fact, he is to be promoted. A man of his stature will not be relegated to bureaucratic work and party squabbling. A new bureau has been created of which he is the head. This bureau, the Bureau of Ideological Analysis, will be one in which Sosolov has uh, sole power to resolve contradictions between the party platform and establish Leninist doctrine. Uh, there is a very real possibility that this bureau may potentially influence some facets of Leninist doctrine in the coming years. It may even lead to some suggestions offered to the Congress of Soviets. Truly marvelous. Um, uh, look at all factions. Promoting him seems like we're giving him a chance. And this one um, is, is more branded towards, leaning towards Bukharina, so. Eh, I don't know if this is the right one to do, but with that one. I like the PP. President of the KPK. But Zadanov is, is the man. Oh, look at him, so handsome. He's kind of graying, though. That's alright. We're all gray eventually. Yeah, we'll also spend the on screen now. Um, I'm gonna wait for some of this other stuff though. Uh, let's see, you guys. Are we gonna use the elites? They're gonna be all elites. I'm sorry, but not really. I'm not sorry at all. They're all gonna be elites if we're gonna have elites. Go with elite, and then cool. There goes uh, Magadan. Goodbye, Magadan. Get some more RD too. And we'll throw on some planes, helicopters on there too. Oh, Baratia, good job. Oh, maybe we can peacefully reunify with them. That'd be kind of cool. The promotion of Suslov. Hey, Maxime, you hear the news about uh, Suslov? Uh, God took away in the Bureau for Ideological Analysis. Who hasn't? I almost feel sorry for the guy. I relegated to doing paper that will never be read by anybody. Party, party leadership says it's a promotion, but if I were in that position, I'd want to blow my brains out. I mean, it's better than getting shot or dis disappeared. Maybe if things get bad, he could even find himself in a position, a decent position, to turn his current promotion into an actual promotion. I don't see it happening. The party seems pretty stable right now. I don't think Suslav will be screaming in his life or in his little forgotten corner of headquarters for a long time to come. You're probably right. It seems ironic to me that such a ambitious guy like Suslav would get purged for a promotion of all things. The perfect position for a man like Suslav. What's well, ours? Uh, let's go and just do that one. Despite all odds stacked against us, we have managed to bring all of Western Russia under one banner, a feat not seen since the 50s. However, our conquests like glorious were swept, and we must devote our energies towards consolidating our new lands. We must ensure that Parma is scourged clean of the Brotherhood, that the last ROA soldiers are captured, and the most importantly, we must end the lawlessness present in our country. It will be a difficult task, but one that is necessary, as we cannot afford our state to be on the brink of total anarchy. Raise the red banner. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, let's just survey the Republic first. If we truly to reunite Russia, we need to have access to the fullest potential of our territory, which is something we lack as of now. While there is some resistance against us, the primary problem is that we lack knowledge on what our resources are and where we can get new resources. Even with us piercing together everything we have, there are still a large swaths of our lands that we know nothing about. The time has come for us to conduct a full survey about West Russia. The survey will include the cities so that we can fully understand what needs to be rebuilt in the countryside, so we can acquire access to new resources. It may take time, but we will need it in order to move forward and, and unite Russia. Fair industries. With their increased access to resources, combined with our new conquests, the town has come to expand our industrial output. Firstly, we must integrate the Kubashev industry into our own. Their output must be factored into our planning and industrial production. Secondarily, we must begin to build new factories in our lands. Our access to new resources allows us or allows for our industry to diversify, letting us produce different products. With the combination of Kubashev industry and new factories, we can be prepared for the future wars and we can support the industrial workers, which is a core part of a mandate. Alright, so let me say this here real quick, just because I'm not sure if this will get rid of that focus tree. Because we still need to take out Onega, so, and I want to get research done as fast as possible. Then again, I don't want to get admin efficiency hurting us really badly. Uh, yeah, I'll get over extended administration. I want to wait for that one. I want to wait. Can we get more external investments? Industrial investments, but no. Darn it. Still over a billion a year. More growth. Love it. Survey the Republic. Um... Well, this, this helps us, like, delete some of their strength here, which is very nice, actually. We do like and appreciate. Alright, look at all that lag. Oh, happy 66. It's already 66. Holy crap. They have no manpower, which is really nice, too. Very good. Enemies defeated. Great. Raise our banner. Most of our new lands were not run by communists, and it shows. There's a fair amount of apprehension towards the government, as people believe that we will collapse like the Soviet Union of old. We must spread propaganda to inform the people that it was not communism's innate weaknesses that ruined Russia, but the insidious Germans who sought to annihilate us. For, furthermore, we must try to encourage people to show pride in the Soviet Union, after all. It was under the Soviet Union that there was peace, not the monarchists or the Russian Republic. We shall raise a red banner of communism in every village and town so the people see that we've, we have returned to liberate all. Go to the two. Big burly man. He's burly. 
West Russian Soviet Republic. Or Soviet Federation, I should say. Yeah. Get some more loot. And actually, do we expertise up? Oh, or was it equipment? I think it was expertise. Actually, it was probably both. Yeah, it was both. Um, what probably, oh. Huh? Well, it's going up higher now. Well, let's go and try to raid and. Let's do workers. We are here for the workers. Warlord development, anything here? No. Alright, pay. Okay. 400%. 0.8 billion. I can't imagine Onega actually having that much money, but I'm not going to question it. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at all these. Restrictive car arsenal, reliable army commissars, the plan, of course, factional reconciliation, not bad, Bureau of Ideological Analysis. Nice. Good. Oh, we need way more arty, though. We're gonna work on these and work on some more stuff. Over a thousand political power, not bad. So I'm gonna get to this focus first, and then it's gonna hurt us quite badly now. Alright, form the West Russian Soviet Federation. Yay! Um, we could do that one. I just want to attack him. Yes, a third one, because we gotta focus way more on industry now. Way, 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 way more. But now we can do this stuff as well, which is really good. Expertise goes up. Let's see. Uh, we're gonna wait for that one. Escalate land reform. Mm, actually, so that decrease coring time, which could be very strong as well. Best construction, eh, that's okay. Anything here? Industrial expertise goes up. Scientific research, education. Corn expatriates. Um, fifty percent chance. Fifty percent chance. That one's okay. It's it. You get what? Five thousand manpower. Yeah, that's, that's not really worth it in my opinion. Initial propaganda reforms. The programs, war efforts. Uh, weekly stability is not bad, actually. That's not bad at all. Oh, let's leave that one open. And we're going to need some more of this. So we can do this at least once. And why not? It's a lot to spend. We still have 500 PP, though. It's really nice. So now we should have quite a bit more debt. Yep, over 2 billion. 4% more growth. Not bad. And we still have almost 2 billion in uh, surplus. It's not to love. Look at that. Over there, nice thing. The flag, oh my goodness! Chilo May, Chilo May, Ship Love, Yekaterina Furtseva. Oh, that's nice. So that's flag consumption is really good, actually. Do you both? Thank you. Over two billion. There you go. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've only one division taking that weight. Eight divisions, Jesus Christ. Get over that river and then immediately start helping attack. Now force it and break their bunkers. That should be enough to kill them off. Oh wow, you are almost dead. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, this looks cool. A vision for the people. Zidanev is a vision, one that encompasses the entirety of Russia. He believes in a strong democratic state where the people are both free and at the same time capable of rallying to be a strong leader in times of need. With a hold over the state's security, we can start working on our long-term project for Komi and slowly prepare a nation and our people for the greatest struggle of our time, the reclamation of the Soviet Union. Yeah, I don't like how Finley can just immediately enter here, which I do not like at all. I hate, 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 hate that so much. Um, how many men have we lost? 10,000? 16,000? We've cut off not nearly enough. Bunker busters, bunker busters, bunker busters. Good. Sports rivalry, if you worry about that, please go right ahead. There we go, good. Um, if anything, I want you guys to get, do this. And their soldiers are trapped, essentially, now, so. Keep these guys in place. No, do not let them leave. Do not let them leave. They are encircled for a reason. That's ten divisions trapped here. I'd rather lose divisions than have these guys survive. Because these guys have to die. 
Good. Die, Finland. Piece of garbage. There we go. That's good. Now they have a couple more divisions up here, but that's fine. Whatever. Um, how many divisions I've left? Up to ten? No. Oh, hell no. Are you kidding me? No way. No way in hell would we ever let that happen. No. No, 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 no. You wanted to not allow us to reunify with Onega, so. Why would I... Why would we ever want that? Oh, enough of the nonsense, though. Libertarianism has proved ineffectual in tackling the many problems that plague not only Komi, but the entirety of Russia. Freedom does not mean anarchy, and the parties unanimously decided that the time has come for a shift in the focus, of course, with a shift in focus, we mean shift in government. Through the use of revolution decrees, we shall transform Komi into a nation that is the well-being of the nation, and not of the politicians, as its foremost priority. Long live Russia, long live the Soviet Union, long live ultra-visionary socialism, long live Gomrod Zidanov. Yeah, are they? They've lost 100,000 men. And I don't know how they get that much manpower, to be honest with you. What type of conscription level are they at? Oh, they're out of guns, which is good. I mean, we might be out of guns too, but whatever. We're not going to talk about that. And capping flow, very nice. Let's see, it's here. We're just admin strain, that'd be good. Ooh, more political power, that'd be really good. Ooh, more. Ooh, ooh. Social sphere. I like both. We're at war now. Let's get this one first. If we're to maintain ourselves into power, we need to bring the people to our side. Through the revolutionary decrees, we seize power from the corrupt politicians, but we also made many promises to it with the people in order to make them drink from the bitter cup. We now need to decide whether to actually keep our word. On one hand, we have no such obligation. We are in power, and we can finally decide, freely decide, what's best for everyone of the Komi people, without accounting to anyone. On the other, we know what the consequences of such a choice will be, so we better reflect upon the matter carefully. Kill every last fin you see. I want every single one of them dead. I don't care if we're out of equipment. I really don't. So, where are you going? Four percent growth. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. It's very quiet here. Yeah. No. And taking charge. And from a humble beginnings, here we stand, comrades. We have defeated the collaborators and the counter-revolutionaries across these lands and taken up our positions as the rightful heirs to Baharin. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, go there, too. He paused to allow the thunderous applause to end. Triumph and joy filled the chamber, filled with beaming officials and applauding military officers. We will not follow in the footsteps of Comrade Baharin, for the... For he lacked in one critical aspect, the ability to define the ambitious goals necessary to carry Mother Russia forward. The people must have the guidance from above to achieve their full potential and to keep them united up upon the course, from a humble beginnings in Komi, to the formation of a new federation to the ultimate destination and the stars. Oh wow, that really sucks. To achieve this, our guiding hand must be strengthened if we wish to seize our destiny. We cannot wait for a popular census, but we must establish it ourselves. The future comes whether they like it or not. Division for the people. Oh, that sucks. If you know there with capital punishment, a division for the people. Uh, the state sphere. There are many political parties within Comey, and not all of them approve of our most recent development. In order to strengthen our rule upon this country, we will need to deal with them. Some can be appeased, they will be convinced to join us, while others won't, they won't be so pretty. For the good of the Soviet Union, we will need to deal with the matter immediately, or risk serious civil strife when we can't afford it. We should immediately begin talks with other political actors and see whether they wish to be on the political, f the Friends of Socialism list or in the political persuasion one. It's up to them. I do not want to touch that one. That's very bad for us. We have up to eight in total, which is good. Ooh, more divisions. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Not bad. Not bad. Getting worse? Good. Or getting better, I guess I should say. I'm not sure which one I want to do on the left side of the focus tree. Nope. Oh crap, now this is going to suck for us. <sighs> Repeal the revolution decrees. 
Hmm. Penal labor with capital punishment. Free repair. Or a diversion for the people. I kind of like a diversion for the people. P cost per capita goes up way more. Yeah, I can prefer this one. Our citizens will surely protest a lot if we don't keep our word in difficult times such as these. It takes a little spark. A civil war. And Zidanov isn't confident he has the power to quench uh, the dissent. For this reason, we have given the assent to the approval for a new welfare policy that will bring people prosperity to the people. Of course, nothing is, this is nothing but a diversion. Well-fed happy people don't protest when their freedom is taken away, and we have all the intention of exploiting such a simple yet important truth. Is we need to pay some money to ensure the greatness of the Soviet Union, so then so be it. Let's say spirit first. Uh, penal labor. Capital punishment. Penal labor. What are the other levels here? So, we have penal labor. We go up to here. Worse. Yeah, I don't want to get worse. Penal slavery? Yeah. We'll do the other one. That'd be nice. We'll go to the period next. Helsinki? That'd be nice. Yeah, a diversion for the people is fine with me. Ah, so she'll ultra visionary. You got three and a foot set. Well, it's an ultra, uh, ultra visionary, but if she were to be asked about any myriad of fantastical scientific initiatives undertaken by uh, the Federation's government, she could have offered a little insight. Such a response would have puzzled many and led to a subset of the same questioning how she could even therefore even call herself an ultra visionary. Her response, uh, while that while the Donovan and others looked to the stars, she looked into the minds, faces, and identities of the millions of people in the Federation. This is really sad that we can't win here now. She was one of its really most uh, prominent social ultra-visionaries. Within the faction, a focus on achieving radical and revolutionary leaps and progress of the population and social order. Methods of thoughts, terms of instruction, and particularities of the language, and yes, even the very names of people were given all were all concepts that she intended to change. Change for the better, of course. For Seba, knew that her social proposals and pursuits were deemed as less important than the scientific ones, but she also knew that while achievements in space would be limited to the few achievements in the federations, and eventually the world's social order would be transformational to the many, and was prepared to work to achieve that dream, which made her position as a federation's foreign minister so valuable. Zadonov and the others might have thought relatively little about dealings with the outside world, but she saw it as an opportunity to prepare the ground worldwide for growth. Growth that she would only she would one day see achieved, true visionary and special circumstances. It has become apparent to me and those within this government that the current state of internal security has failed us. Rather than keeping us safe, the institution became yet another vehicle of bourgeois control and repression of the proletariat. Thus, I hereby declare the complete dissolution of our current security measures and institute another one to be staffed by citizens lord of the revolution. So said the special announcement on the radio by Zidana to the public of Komi. While the act was, to be expected, many are in dark regarding the actual makeup and capacity of such a new organization. This department, referred to by Zidanev as a director for the investigation of special circumstances, is intended to prevent counter-revolutionary activity and to act as their eyes and ears for all loyal comrades. Whether it is more effective than its predecessor, however, remains to be seen. Perhaps we needed it all along. Look at that. Nice. A permanent leader. We'll go with that one and then redirect the popular socialism. Patriotism keeps nations together, but we are a different kind of nation. The Soviet Union will one day, for sure, encompass the entire world in a blessed utopia, socialist utopia, which means that fostering a normal patriotism won't do. In order to ensure that our new nation stands a tentative test of time, we shall create the new Soviet identity and convince the people to believe in it. The Soviet Union was once the greatest nation in the world, and returned to its rightful place. Into the mountain, I, Paramount Leader Andrei Zedanov, am writing to you, the Collective Directorate for the Investigation of Special Circumstances, for a reason thus considered necessary for the stability and safety of the Federation, and therefore must be kept under the umbrella of top secret. For almost two decades, the people of Magnitogorsk were terrorized by the rogue scientist Torfim Lysenko, using them as a subject for a moral, degenerative experiments of which the specifics are not yet worthy of print. This is not a secret to those like yourself. However, unethical these experiments were, they were by by and large, excellent collections of data. Data would undoubtedly be useful in both the production and expansion of the revolution. With the termination of Lysenko and the occupation of the Black Mountain by outside force, a brief operational window has been opened for the retrieval of data from the power vacuum of Magnitogorsk. Thus, with the power of the people behind me, I hereby direct a major redirection of resources towards infiltration of the Black Mountain facility. Precise methodology shall be determined by sub department heads and by agents in the field. Additional resources shall be considered upon application to the directorate. Make it so in measures for dinner. Yekaterina Fertseva. Smile politely across the dinner table and suppress a screaming insider. The man who invited her, another Presidium member, was speaking at length about Zidana's latest initiative, a helicopter-mounted Mesa cannon, and the problems he was having getting Shepilov to properly fund it. He thought he, she could help. And that request, proving that he had not even been bothered to learn what her position on such pursuits were, was the greatest insult of all. Plotseva was used to it, as one of the vanishingly few women in the Presidium, let alone within the ultra-visionary faction she was sought out by many for shows of sport. As though her voice mattered more, perhaps it did in a sense, but only so far as it could be shown, presented, placed on a shelf to be pointed as as an example of the wide appeal of our policy, whatever that policy may be, what she actually thought mattered little. 
which she made a lot of polite conversations and nice dinners with other politicians who chased after her, more interested in her biology than her position. But if she could not divorce such pursuits, she could at least exploit them. She could promise to help the man, knowing full well that Shepalov would defeat the initiative on his own and in turn gain his vote for one of her upcoming social proposals. A nice victory, as she thought, and so she maintained her polite smile. The screaming had ended, insulting but quite useful, on the mountain. Report. Infiltration of the Black Mountain facility formerly under control of the Trophim Lysenko deemed successful, allowing the arrival of attached dossiers at their designated drop point. Agents B and R infiltrated by means of local security service enlistment and subversion of certain contacts through material incentives. Per director for the investigation of special circumstances, expectations, resource, and Lamarckian models of human genetic alteration was indeed underway within certain facilities due to the pseudoscientific nature of Lamarckian genetics, per per peripheral research involving endocrinological and experimental biochemical development is thus deemed more immediately useful for the People's Com Commissariat of Science Usage, and records on these topics have been secured. Continued. Special circumstances. Involvement is recommended by Agent B upon witnessing experimental records involving human adolescents and hyd hydrogen can cyanide. Report concludes. The den of machine madness now distinguished but the evolution of the mind. When the realization hit her, Ekaterina Forseva was surprised that it had arrived as it had, during a mundane sitting of the Presidium. As usual, she was frozen in her position of practice but conducted neutrality, quietly sharing looks with Shepalov every time another project of scientific madness was proposed. Her attention was drawn back to the events when Zidane began pontificating about how the support of the people, of the no-doubt visionaries among the Federation's millions of ordinary citizens, was critical to the Presidium's efforts in securing technological dominance. At first she had ignored the line, and then it was as if she'd been struck by lightning. So powerful was the moment that her mask cracked, and if only for a second, and even then drawing several interested stares. She had been struggling so hard to gain support from the scientists for initiatives in support of the socialist supercultures that she knew was critical to create, but all she had to do was explain to them that a true socialist culture united in visionary thought could not but expand every effort, dedicate every jewel in her being towards the achievement of scientific greatness. The scientists were empirical men, procedural men, and they simply implicated, accepted, implicitly accepted, as the fact that proper support and infrastructure was critical to the success of any experiment or feat of engineering. If she could only convey that proper social culture was just as important as the right carbon content of steel or the correct amperage of an applied current, then she could all but guarantee support. But save allowed herself a small smile. Once she prepared arguments, things could move quickly indeed. A visionary rea realization and political reliability. Unlike libertarian socialists, we know that each and every person is of a value. Nameless assemblies will soon fester with corruption and infighting, but we need to rely on people of outstanding competence and loyalty to the socialist ideals. By looking for such people inside the party bureaucracy and trusting them with positions of power, will impro surely improve both efficiency and reliability of the administration. This is a true Soviet way. A paramount leader. In this new Soviet Union, we don't need an illusion of separation between party and government. Socialism demands truth, and will devote all of our energies towards turning it into reality to this end. We shall overhaul the obsolete institutions of Komi to better represent this new state of affairs. The offices of Premier and General Secretary will be merged into a single one, creating a truly and completely socialist government, along with the paramount leader of the Soviet Union, Comrade Zdanov. And a little bit of lag, but what else is new? Observe the Suslavites. Elements that may work against us from the shadows shall not be allowed to continue their activities. Silence Bukharanites. Oh, what? that's silencing quite a few people. Silence, silence, silence. Brighting games with a diversion for the people, but... Ooh. Oh, let's take the hit first. Observe the Suslavites. So even though the Suslav has gone for good, his followers still invest the party. There's still a talks about orthodoxy and the socialist democracy are commencing to tire paramount leader Zidana. We can't tolerate divisions within the party and we'll need to deal with them soon. Those who are reasonable enough will be allowed to remain and perhaps given economic incentivization to keep them loyal, while the others will be expelled from the party, and we all know that being expelled from the party means that the, the end of one's political life. Nice, and we're still building up some prisons here. In Onega, of all places. Awesome. But this is looking awesome. Really good. Keep cutting it down. Cut it down. Westbrook corruption, not good, but it's looking quite a bit better now. Um, the next one we're going to get might be industrial equipment, maybe. Military professionalism is not doing too bad. Of course, we want maximum mechanization already. Um, out there research facilities is not good enough. Almost five, though. A little above four, which is pretty nice. So, some bites, yes. And a fa fight complete. Zidane was a smart man, and the first thing you learn about being smart in the old Komi Republic is that you could never afford to show yourself as such. The left was a den of people who believed they were smarter than they were, or worse, acted like it. That is why Zidane had seized control and his competitors had not. The key was not to act smart, it was to have the people at your back, and yet to have, and better yet, to have the right people at your back. And so when Zidane called the impromptu party meeting, he focused not only 
on speech writing, but on table arrangements, like a doll maker playing very elaborate house games. You move certain positions close to him, and the names of those who were less than enthusiastic about ultra visionary socialism a little away, a little away. And his mind constructed a careful mod of applause built in time just right to give the illusion of omnipresence. By the time the party congress was formally in session, it had already begin, been regged to heck, but no one noticed, of course. When the party secretary declared the merger of the offices of the general secretary and premier, it seemed like a tidal wave of applause swept the room, and confused delegates rose to give applause to what seemed like the people's will. Delegates carefully planned in key positions on the prim perimeter, clapped louder than the rest, so the loudspeakers placed under each table amplified the effect. As the Dunn have accepted the laurels of Paramount Leader with grace, not a single question was raised, and so, without ever lifting a finger in modesty, the Dunn have stole the Congress, the party, and the Federation, and from that moment, the march of the Soviet history was attuned to an altogether different beat. The Dunn of you, magnificent dude. Signs of the Bukhara Knights. At the beginning, we formed a pact of mutual assistance with the Bukharina in order to solidify our power. Now, however, they are beginning to protest for the fact that they are slowly but steadily sidelining them. A pity because now that we have discovered it, they will be forced to simply remove them from any office within the government of the party. There's no place for division or disloyalty in the Soviet Union we're trying to build, and all those who resist the plans our paramount leader is drawing for the nation do not deserve to partake of its power. Out with the traitors! Nice. Very nice. Despotism. Fascismus, national daddyism. Nice. Very good. Very, 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 very good. <sighs> and then, I assemble the visionaries. The people can't decide for themselves. They will only fall prey of demagogues and bourgeois who will exploit them for their own selfish gains. What the people need is a competent government made of experts who know what the nation needs to grow and be prosperous and know how to achieve the goal. Paramount leader Zazanov has formed a new government, one where scientists, economists, and engineers and medics will be allowed to run their own ministries. Such a change in pace will surely help us recover from the German bombings and the damages wrought to rush by the civil strife with the certainty of knowledge. We march towards the future. Expertise will begin to improve, reduce administration of the government, which is good, increases maximum investment in administrative funding. Awesome. And keep working on that industry, because after the industry is done, we're going to focus a lot on other things. And I'll keep one on, like I said before. It's fine. Better trucks, that's right. Oh, do we improve our social credit rating? Oh, social credit? No, not about social credit, but just credit rating in general. Yes, we did. Now we're B. We're fair. Which I don't like that we can't get it accessible or intermediate. Um, I wish you could get up to here once you, uh, you know, conquer more of Russia. I think that'd be kind of nice. And we're still technically probably considered a backwater anyways, but still. That's a plus looking pretty good. 3% growth. Not as good as it was once. Once was, but whatever. You know, it is what it is. Oh, just keep making better, making better, making better. Better, 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 better. We are visionaries here, my... Friends, a scientific system. Ultra visionary socialism isn't like the other thousands of deviations from Lenin socialism. It's an entirely new ideology, an evolution, just like humanity is bound to evolve and forever improve. Ultra visionary socialism is the first form of truly refined socialism, one where ideology and material capabilities are fused in order to improve the lives of the Soviet citizens. Guided by the benevolent and knowing hand of our paramount leader and his loyalists, the future of the Soviet Federation looks bright. With a strong state of patriotic citizenry and an unflinchingly committed government, no one will be able to oppose us. It reduces admin strain. Ultra vision of socialism, we lose even more political power, which sucks. Or we can take the hit. We get more efficiency cat, which is okay, more research speed, which is good. Need to consume goods goes up though. Unlocks access to economic, military, and diplomacy focuses. And then we can exert influence on the seven euros, which is fine. Not really concerned about that just because these guys will fight them regardless. Oh boy, don't tell me work. Oh god, work is here. That is not good. But they're probably gonna kill off Baratia. Yeah. This looks good in terms of the equipment we have, but it's not good enough yet. Yeah, we need more planes. We need planes in general, actually, if anything, here. Do, ooh, main battle tanks? Right here? Oh, do we not have cast? Oh, we don't have any cast yet. It's strange, but okay. And they'll probably go to the economy next. I like fixing the economy. Vision for the army? It's not bad. Vision for the world. Uh, change popularity of socialism in the Republic of Finland. They did have a fascist coup, a vision for the economy. We all know the pitiful, pitiful state of economies in. Twenty years of civil strife and Luftwaffe bombings have left our nation in tatters and our economic system with it. Infrastructures lie broken, industries have reverted into small workshops due to the fear of being targeted by the bombs, and our agricultural sector seems ripped from a book about the Middle Ages with the constant risk of famine. Our leader knows all this, but unlike all others, he knows how to address it. In his vision are all the needed steps to take to restore Komi to his former glory and from such a base reclaim the entirety of the Soviet Union. He leads us and we only need to follow. Macro scale strategy. The Global Armed Forces program looks amazing. But Micro scale tactics. Renovate military standards. Jesus Christ. That looks awesome as well. Oh my goodness. Ruslan. Many people remark that a German served as a general in the military of a Russian state so close to Muscovy, and especially a communist one. People who spoke to Fritz Schmenkel at length, however, did not 
uh, remained surprised for long. A deserter from the Wehrmacht, he despised the Nazis for every fiber of his being, had ever since they murdered his father when Fritz was just 16 years old, had ever since they imprisoned him for daring to think differently, ever since they had killed the partisans he had deserted to join after years of fighting, and forced him to flee deep into Russia. His German grew rusty these days, and for when he spoke it, people looked at him with a mixture of fear, suspicion, and disgust. He could not blame them, not a single one of them. Every Nazi he had killed, every part of Russia he helped bring into the Soviet fold once more, scarcely compared to the countless sins committed by his people. Shemenko wondered if he could go to heaven, as the Christians claimed people did when he did when he died. If not, at the very least, he would make sure the mountain of dead Nazis awaited him in fear at the deep, deepest part of Hack. Peace is impossible until justice is obtained. The Global Armed Forces Program looks awesome, but I don't want, oh my gosh. A particular dream journey. You know what? I'll let you guys decide. Should we do macro scale strategy? Or should we go with micro scale tactics? Let me know in the comments below. But a vision for the economy. Spectre of stars. Socialism as a theory never successfully managed to envision the mass changes to human cultural di dialectically produce of necessity and progress. Humanity can transcend all boundaries, gravitational, me mental, bio botanologically. With the tyranny of the market lifted, real innovation could begin under a program of the complete human reimagination. And so it is that with Germany will fall. With our economy churning at a full rational speed under a cybernetic and computational core, the fascist basket case of the German economy can be revealed as a pacing dog it is. Complete elimination of markets under scientific guidance is the means to military victory and the beginning of a man's era among in the stars. Except from the ultra visionary manifesto by A. A. Zadonov. Soon it lives up to his name. Ooh, growth increased by 0.3. That's not bad. Ooh, but research development. Mm. Academic base begins to do slowly improve. Subsidized higher education. Not bad, too. Ooh, better monthly poverty change. Urgh. I want to do all this stuff at the same time. Let's do the people's commissary of science. Ultra visionary socialism is not just a catchy name. We, we who believe in visionary, ultra visionaryism, believe first and foremost in the freeing power of science. Scientific progress is key to the evolution of mankind, and just as socialism, it frees the masses from prejudice and superstition. It is only natural that a socialist government is devoted, among many other things, to the pursuit of technological advancement for the betterment of both the state and its citizens. To this end, we shall establish a new people's commissariat, one where science is unshackled and dedicated to the advancement of the superculture above all else. Yes. We can exert influence, but it doesn't really matter. So. Right, so we were about that. was good. A new theater. Joint military bases, huh? Here's his influence. Oh, look at this. It's kind of cool. Our growth will increase a little bit too. Yeah, why not? Oh, local businesses. Spend a lot more money. Um, cool construction. That's not bad either. Influence growth. Okay, influence and then growth. Hospital construction. We're point one two. We're point zero five seven. Full and oil extraction. That seems kinda cool. Who died? Someone was after Oh, Asia. China. A little bit of debt, but whatever. We're still cutting it down. Not really too concerned about it. It's February twenty eighth, huh? Never mind, it's March. I'll do all these up. Cybernetics and Soviet project. Zidanov, deep in the thrall in the uh, in the latest of American rock coming from his gramophone, was suddenly jostled, jolted to the world, material world, by the entry of the towering economy minister, Dmitry Shepilov. In an amazingly measured tone, Shepilov thumbed through the weighty file now on Zidanov's desk, jumping from talks of telephonic networks to obscure policies in the 20 Siberia to variables in economic simulation. Once the breathless birth of the future coming from Shepilov's mouth ended, Zidanov bolted upwards and gave him a kiss on each cheek. Beautiful, beautiful, a fully automated and scientifically planned economy, free from any nefarious influences or chaotic inputs from men. Sheer Russian industriousness mixed with Marxism with with, with robotics. Yes, robotics. Ah, Shepilov, we're going to suffocate capitalism, he exclaimed, while throwing his arms upwards and turning towards the horizon out of his window, and then do the same to the Germans and crappers. What effing computers? Yes. Yes, sir. A vision for the future. If we truly want to claim that we pursue the advancement of the science, of science and society, we need to prove it with facts. Our education system is obsolete and underfunded, and most schools desperately need a refurbishment or a complete reconstruction. By granting more funds to schools and universities, and establishing new advanced study courses for our superior learning institutions, or institutes, we'll not only pursue our vision for the future, we shall turn it into a reality. Oh, absolutely. We can prepare an invasion, but we're good. Receptionist is 20%, so, which is, eh, it's alright. We need more prisons here, too. Mm, equipment not quite enough. Yeah, we're not really building too much here, are we? Economy, though. Not bad. 0.224 billion. No. 224 million. Growth is not as much as it used to be. That's fine, whatever. Oh, admin efficient expenditures. Oh, we get tax even more people and more stability. It's fine with us. Heck yeah. 2.1 billion. Not bad. It was all the way. It was spiked really high. And then we went down. Nice. Minus 0.12 is so good. Oh, we're getting closer. So good. A vision for the future. Electronics. 
academic base facility we get to approve. Untouched Frontier. Zadana began a speech with a small crowd of men and women before him. Six men, two women, each of whom was a guiding light of the sciences. Ah, oh, beautiful, we have a... He pinched his temple, then snapped to attention and began pointing at each of the eight individuals who ran the gamut from computer science innovators to inventors of cheaper, more durable forms of concrete to trailblazing psychotherapists. Finished with its attendance taking, Zidana began his promises and hopes, so I expect all of you to build a functional human guided space shuttle within six months. The figures in front of Zidana have stiffened immediately, then a few turned sheet white when he began finished by saying, Failure means execution by firing squad. Begin! <laughs> Once his terror uh, had done its work, Zidana have goffled. Oh. Who do you think I am, a Nazi? You are all heroes who will be treated as such. Caviar and champagne awaits tonight. You will each continue the beautiful work you've been doing in your own institutions before. Except now you have the collective purpose of popular work. By the end of your tenures, we will have thoroughly conquered both the minds and the stars. While some of the scientists were still shaken from the earlier attempt at humor, some already loosened up at the promise of luxury and respect, and now began the discussions that would lay the groundwork for tomorrow's Soviet Federation. From fields to stars, a new dawn emerges. Research of facilities begins to rapidly improve. Nice. Psychological revolution. Decisions to allow for research into experimental human psychology and related technologies. Ooh. Ooh, I, I kind of want to see what this old dove stuff does. Um, but I do have the submod currently installed because I fade and fade out and actually restarted it. But we'll get to that in a little bit. I, I don't know. Should we do that earlier on? Does it matter how late we do that? Because I do want to get some of this uh, growth and stuff too. The old Soviet Union was lost lost the war due to its inefficient economy. Bukharin insisted on small industry. What, what he was needed was a strong centrally planned economy centered around heavy industry, and mass mechanization. Now it falls upon us to mend his mistakes. By assessing our resources and forming the needed legal framework, we'll lay the groundwork for a new economy. One where the state leads with a strong and knowing hand amidst the difficult currents of the world. Oh, yes. We got these back. Yes, 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 yes. All yes for me. Quite a bit more debt. 7.7 billion in debt, but hey, I don't care. Remaining sides of the Germans, so be it. Spend a little bit more money. It's fine with us. 26 divisions, that'll be very good in the future, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Mm, yeah, we gotta get some helicopters and stuff. Canada looks a liberal party. My time is now, he looks kinda handsome. Not gonna lie, looks kinda handsome. Peace conference is over. Alright, and, well, this must be like, what, the West African War or something? Because the Chinese War with uh, Long Yun is already over, so. Uh, that division's okay. Ah, no! Ah, not Fal Valvatung Palsburg, so basically Muscovine. And Muscovine's getting released now under Bowman? Balding, balding Bowman. Well, that was pretty bad lag. Not gonna lie, that's pretty bad. But if you're still watching, thank you for watching it, guys. I do appreciate it. Watching all the way to the end, because I like to know what's going to happen with ultra visionary sciences. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. That's ridiculous how long it takes. That's pretty darn bad. That's actually really, really god awful. There you go. But we'll have to call Bowman eventually. Uranium deposit would be nice. Still waiting? Yeah, I mean, like that. More growth is fine with me. I love it. Vision for the future. More political power is nice. Hard cost, but whatever. So we have two, about 2 billion in surplus, and we'll do it for this, of course, and then what? Oh, science? It's not bad. More science? Yes, please. The realists. For many, the ascension of Andrzej Zidanov and his ultra-visionary faction, together with the subsequent establishment of the Federation, was something to be celebrated. Dmitry Shepilov had once been one of those people, and he was appointed to be its Minister of Finance. Every single day since he had been an exercise in either frustration or exasperation, and very often both in combination. The visionary initiatives proposed by Zidanov himself, or by his adherents, if were permitted to a one. Utterly insane on a national scale, nobody but himself and vanishingly few others seemed to realize this. Concepts that should have existed only in university laboratories, that should have only been received in small grants, if any at all, were suddenly introduced at the Presidium, assigned national priority and allocated billions of rubles, the criteria for which often could be traced back to because the paramount leader had a visionary idea. There was no way to run a small business, let alone a recovering great power like Russia, and Shipilov often felt like the only man willing to say so. The one saving grace, the one thing that he gave thanks for, was the discretion his position gave him. As the man ultimately in charge of implementing financial policy as he could, as much as possible, rein in spending when Zidanov and his clique were not looking, which, given their focus on devising new visionary efforts, was often. He only hoped that he could continue to do so and find some allies besides, if not, he did not know how much longer he could keep up. The one adult in the room. Cybernetic agriculture? Where are we for agriculture? 
It, it's actually really bad. We definitely need that one first, probably. Oh, let's be really nice. But expand cybernetic agriculture. Our agricultural sector is mostly returned to the Middle Age. Farmers try to get by with what little they can grow in the mismanaged farms using the tools that their grandfathers use, and the fathers of their grandfathers before them. This is absolutely unacceptable. If we truly want to rebuild the Soviet Union to what it was before, we'll need to have a healthy surplus of food for growing cities. To this end, we shall destine funds to acquire modern tractors and industrial farming tools for the farmers. The progressive mechanization of agriculture not only improve the growth output of our farmland, but also free up more potential workforce for the factories. This way, our society will slowly shift towards socialism by itself. The blueprint for civilization, though. Sidonov so looked at the paper in front of him, carefully down onto his desk, looking at the aid who handed it to him. This is fascinating for certain. Whoever wrote this seems to have a deep understanding of civilization, technology, and energy. This levels of civilization theory is intriguing, he began, hauling himself out of his seat and moving to store the scholarly paper on one of his shelves, his aide watching intently. So what do you think, sir? Well, continued Zidonov, he's moved back to the seat, dropping it with a grunt. Quite frankly, his work is impressive. I just fail to understand why you brought it to me, certainly. The work is a fascinating analysis of the growth of society, past and present, and mastery over energy, but what does this have to do with our goals apart from a pretty roadmap for the future? It seems to me like a visionary material, sir. Not just anybody has a keen understanding of socialism to be a true visionary, Boris. I was being very generous when I let you show me this writing, and should you, you should at least make it worth my while. Well, here's his next work. It's about how unity and socialism can guide us to the next level of civilization as described in his writings. They had set another paper onto the table, so down of opening it up and skimming for a moment before looking back at his aid. What did you say this man's name was again? Nikolai Kardashev, sir. Kardashev. Expand the power grid? Okay, why not? Mm, yeah, that looks pretty good too. And more production units, yay. Um, so we're at 7. Let's go up to 9 here. And then we'll go to 25. That's fine, because we don't want to build stuff here, but we need way more factories. We have enough on artillery for now, it looks like. And we should have enough for the future. We're going to need at least 3 on infantry equipment, though. But of course, we're relatively short course. Expense cybernetic agriculture, and then we'll take one more. The Kardashev scale. Trust me, he's a genius. He calls it the civilization scale. Kardashev was not proud of what he was doing. When he was invited to speak to Zidonim himself, he was giddy at being able to discuss science and earn prestige as a true visionary. He expected a quiet saying, but as he approached the room, he could hear multiple sp voices speaking. So with a huff, he listened to the door, like an eavesdropper. It seemed people were being briefed on this theory. Effectively, there are three levels of civilization, planetary, stellar, and galactic, each defined by the resident society over control of energy. Type 1 civilizations hold the ability to use and store all of their planet's energy. Type 2 civilizations do the same with their solar system. Type 3 do the same with the galaxy. We, of course, are not at any of these, but as he has said, we may yet be one day. What makes this man a true visionary is he believes that we can become a planetary civilization through socialism and cultural unity. Nikolai tensed up as he heard a gentle murmur of approval and discussion. Rising to his full height and bracing himself, Nikolai opened the door to find a small group of men gathered around a table. It was a don of himself at the head. Each of them had a copy of the two of his recent papers in their hands with annotations were scrawled over them. There he is, gentlemen. This is Nikolai Kardashev. Nikolai, these are my most trusted advisors. It is a pleasure to meet you in the flesh. Zidonov spoke qu quickly, like me, and moved to usher Kardashev into the room, not letting him get a word in edgewise. The flustered Kardashev began to respond, Ah, oh, well, I see you are all familiar with my work. I take this as not the one on mean on one meeting, the one-on-one -on -one meeting you oppose this as, is it, sir? I'm afraid not. I'll come to you with a proposal, comrade. How would you like to join the State Planning Bureau and lead us forward on the scale of yours? I, I guess so. Wonderful. Just one last question, Mr. Kadashev. How about a, a new name for that scale of yours? I suppose I'd be open to suggestions. And let us conclude with what? From the collective to the collectives. Optimized resource exploitation looks really good. Uh, universal infrastructure expansion. Centralized manufacturing. Ooh. Urban resettlement programs. Oh, agriculture and society development begin to worsen. Building the future. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's go... We're really low, so let's do ag ag industrial synchronism. Syncretism. Industrial farming isn't just about having tra fa tractors on threshing machines, it's about training farmers and the use of modern farming methods, developing more efficient spy routes, building aqueducts, improved field output, and selecting more resistant crops, and much, much more. For millennia, agriculture has been about tradition and chance. In this new age of socialism, we tolerate neither. Whether new technologies and competent planning will turn a countryside into a productive part of our country for the betterment of the people and for the sake of socialism. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And, uh, yeah, let me know which way should we go here regarding the Global Armed Forces Program or Renovate Military Standards. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.